Hello, it's so good to see you again. I am Barbara and together with Daniel I restore the historic sailing ship Flying Coney. This time we continue to work on our engine and we will find out if our duff eventually starts after a very long time. Last time we exchanged all the coolant hoses. Many of them were broken and leaking. And now the engine already looks way better. If you haven't seen part 1, here it is. This time we check the oil and the diesel system and if everything goes as planned the engine will be finally running by the end of this video. We do all this together with John, a professional mechanic from England. Today is going to be round two. The engine has to be drained of its oil. We have to do a few more checks. We have to change the fuel filters. It hasn't ran, I understand, for approximately six months. The engine oil has got a little smell of diesel in it. So we don't want to start it with the diesel in the oil, obviously because it's going to contaminate it and thin it down. And by the early afternoon, this thing will be purring away like a kitten with a tummy full of warm milk. Nothing really, nothing, nothing on the dipstick. Long overdue, long overdue for a change. Um, apart from the fact that it's, it's very, very black, uh, you can now, we've sucked a lot of it out, you can smell the diesel contaminants in it. So yeah, it, it, it was, it had to come out, it had to come out. When it comes to draining the oil, you're left with two options. Either you use the drain plug at the bottom of the oil pan, but it's quite difficult to get a container or something in the bilge of the boat and to get it out. So it can be a little bit of a mess. So you also have your uh, pumps, oil pumps, which you, you have this hose here and you stick it in the hole from the dipstick and then you pump out the oil which is a little bit of work because there is quite a lot of oil in the engine, but this is less messy and it's a good way. We're now changing the oil filters. These don't look that old, but because we don't know the history of the thing, they're all going to be changed anyway. So hopefully these will all come undone. Uh, they look as if they should. You can't really go wrong with it. Place it on. Tighten the screw, it actually grips it and you use the whole body of the filter wrench to spin it off. Easy as that. But if you haven't got one of these, and you should have, two ways of doing it. Spearing it with a screwdriver, very, very messy. Or any bit of abrasive paper, wrap it around the filter with the abrasive side against the filter, and it gives you tremendous grip. I'm lucky enough to have big hands, but if you can get both hands on it, it does the same job. Right, the engine's gonna thank you for this. Literally turn it till it contacts the base and that will do it. It won't come off. If that rubber seal on the filter is clean, that will seal. That's all you need to do. Just makes it easier. Some people even put this back on and tighten it back up again. Well, the next guy comes to take it off. He's not going to be very happy.
this is going to be one of the eternal arguments that goes on forever. If you've got a filter that screws up, uh, you can fill it, always fill it. I'm going to put my neck out on the line and say always fill it. Because there's no oil in the system now. We need to have a head of oil that the oil pump can pick up. This literally keeps the system wet. And again, <coughs> tighten it until it touches. <coughs> That's not going to leak. And spookily enough, the dates are actually re readable. They would normally end up that side of the, the thing and you, you wouldn't see them until you took them off. But that is your oil, system, oil filters changed, painless as it was. Finally fixing the engine and getting help from such an experienced mechanic like John really feels good. And sometimes getting help is important. You can imagine that refitting a large project boat and making videos about it is not the easiest life one can choose. But don't get me wrong, it is exactly what we want to do and most of the time we even enjoy it. And it is a privilege to share this whole adventure with you. However, there are certain challenges that are connected with this lifestyle. There are many financial uncertainties, it is quite stressful and sometimes YouTube can be an amplifier of every self-doubt you ever had. And since we are underway all the time, it is quite difficult to talk about all that with someone. Luckily, there is a platform called BetterHelp, which is also the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful and unbiased advice. First, you go to the site. You can use my link betterhelp.com slash flyingcony. You answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you usually within 48 hours to a professional therapist. I find it really helpful to talk about the challenges I face right now. Together with my therapist, I worked on becoming the person I want to be. Over the months, I developed a useful skill set that helps me to stay more relaxed throughout the refit project and also manage everyday life way better. So talking to a licensed therapist can be helpful for everyone and not just when you're facing mental health problems. And if you think it can help you too, then head over to betterhelp.com slash flyingcony or select Sailing Flying Coney at sign up to get a special discount of your first month of therapy. We're now coming to fill the engine with oil. You'll notice that the rocker boxes have got two filler caps in. Most cars only have one. But what we're going to do with this one is take both off. Because as we're filling the engine, as the oil goes in, it's going to expel air. So as the oil goes in one side, it can expel it out the other side. It doesn't matter which one you use. The manufacturers suggest a 30 weight oil, but it is possible to use a 1540. Um, because the engine is potentially going to come apart again in the not too distant future, we're going to put that in because this thing takes an awful lot of oil and it's expensive. So if we've got a cheaper oil that we can just put in to run and clean things out, it's going to come out anyway. When it comes to oil, you basically have two different types of oils. You have your single grade oils, like this SAE 30 here, and you have your multi grade oils, like this 15W40. Back in the old days, you did oil changes quite regularly. You had different oils for the summer and for the winter, and you changed it before the winter. So they thought it's a good idea to develop something new, and they came up with the multi grade oils which were known in the first years as all year round oils. So the idea is to have a, a thinner oil for the winter and with uh, technology, with polymers, they uh, stretch the usability of this oil uh, to make it thicker. The problem with multi-grade oil is that over the time they lose the, the thickness, they get thinner and thinner and thinner and you're left with a really, really thin oil. So when it comes to heavy duty marine equipment, usually it's better to use single grade oil. And we bought this single grade oil for the engine and for the gearbox in quite a large quantity. But the boat also came with a few containers of this 15W40 and it's completely fine to use it in the engine. And since we have planned to do an oil change 
in not a lot of time anyway to clean the engine. It's completely fine to use the 15W40. We exchanged the oil and swapped the filters and as we just saw that was absolutely necessary. The oil was black and smelled like diesel and the filters were pretty dirty. Now we have finally a clean oil system again and the next step is the diesel system. Let's see what we find there. Our next step, fuel system. So you've got a filter here, particle filter, that then moves on to a canister oil a fuel filter up here. Underneath here would be your water separator. Diesel fuel does tend to attract water. Being heavier than the fuel, it will sink to the bottom. So, quite literally, we'll start with this. Try not to drop it into the bilge. There is no water in it. I think now that we've noticed the amount of dirt in it, it would be a wise thing. Let's take that apart, take it on a bench and uh, take that bowl off and clean it all out. That's got to come from the tank. Thankfully, this would have stopped that. To get further on, you're really into my fine, very, very fine microfilters. So this just stops the big chunks, get you in. But that is a clear indication you've got rust in your tanks. Okay, fuel system, folks. A boat like Flying Coney usually has large diesel storage tanks. We have about a capacity of 8,000 liters, which brings us from here to America, which is quite a lot. But the problem with large storage tanks is that if they're half empty then you do get condensation within the tanks and you do get water into the diesel fuel. So you always try to have the storage tanks as full as possible and you try to use up one and then you head up to the next. And from the storage tanks the fuel is transferred to a day tank. The day tank has about as the name says, about 20, 24 hours of fuel in it. But the fuel is gravity fed to the engine. And we transfer the fuel from the storage tanks to the day tanks through a filter and water separator. So in theory, that should be just clean fuel in the day tank. And from the day tank, the fuel is gravity fed to the first filter and water separator and from that first filter it is fed to a second filter at the engine and from that filter through the engine generating propulsion, generating noise and smoke because it is a duff. The, the fuel filter itself is doing its job admirably. It's the small, tiny bits that get through it that accumulate in the rest of the system that's the harmful bit. And all this is contamination. In the fuel pumps, well, they will ingest a certain amount of debris and still work, but you're dealing with components that are so finely machined to build up the types of pressures that you need to inject fuel into the engine, that the tiniest, tiniest little mark on some surface is enough to render that fuel pump, that very expensive fuel pump, scrap. It's just an indication, all of this, is just an indication of how little care has been taken with this boat. So we just clean it out, clean it out and move on. This is brake cleaner. It will dissolve all forms of oil, grease, but then it'll evaporate completely, leaving no trace of it behind. But in terms of cleaning for engine components, it's, it's ideal stuff.
diesel, is it? We found a lot of dirt in the filter, which was kind of unexpected. Since we do have a day tank and a drain on the bottom, we always check the condition of the fuel before we start the engine. And until now we never had problems. So the dirt must be sitting there for years. Even though the boat came with a whole box of spare filters, no one ever bothered to change them. Luckily the filters caught all the debris and it didn't damage the engine. We cleaned everything thoroughly and the last step is to put it all back together. While well, at Chattanooga, a boy had a dollar and a dime. I hit it out from Nashville on the hard rock line. There we are, ready for many, many, many more hours of trouble-free service. Should have been done a long time ago. Oh yeah, 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 the local man. Been saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dog, but it never adds up at all. But coming around the river bank where the old train was so sane. The very next thing you hear from me, I've been tied to a board and chain. Okay. Before we installed the filter, we flushed the fuel line. Since there was so much dirt in the filter, there still might be some particles in the fuel line. And it would be a shame to bring all the dirt back in the system as soon as we start the engine. With the curse filter cleaned and back in place, next on the list is the finer filter. That one is there to catch all the smaller things that pass the first filter. Now we've got the fuel past the coarse filter. We're now up to the finer filter. which sits here. Oh, look at that. That was a clean container there. This is quite a coarse filter. It will filter out a lot of bigger particles. And normally, as long as the diesel fuel is relatively clean, that's all it needs. These are finer filters. These are meant to catch tiny particles. But as we've seen, look what it caught. So all of that debris has actually got past this filter through the line and has thankfully been caught by this because that would be absolutely catastrophic for the fuel pump. It, it couldn't cope with that. It would, it would destroy itself very, very quickly. Now, I am going to use the oil filter strap to tighten this up purely because I cannot get a full hand grip on it. But I'm not going to over tighten this. It doesn't need it. So we just, again, same process applies. We tighten it until you feel it touch the housing. And then, which is about there, Maybe no more than a quarter of a turn. We'll fully tighten it. Right, more than enough. The diesel system is finally clean and just like with the oil system, it was absolutely necessary to take everything apart and change the filters. Because during the last 15 years, there was not much maintenance on this boat. But we are not done with the fuel system yet. We still have to bleed it. 
Right now the filters and the fuel line are filled with air and the fuel pump can't suck the diesel all the way to the engine. Luckily the DAF comes with a handy little hand pump to prime the system. Yep, fuel is flowing. That bolt there, which is the bleed for the fuel, and then you'll have your pump. Yep. So now we need to undo it here, and then you just pump that lever until that's going to fill the fuel, the filter up until it comes out in a stream without any air in it. The next step is to fill the engine with coolant again. Last time we exchanged all the coolant hoses, so currently the engine is completely empty. We decided to fill up the engine with tap water, because we will train the whole cooling system anyway quite soon in the next shipyard's time, and antifreeze is expensive. So we don't want to waste 120 liters of coolant just for a few months. During the last years the engine was filled just with plain water and as we saw last time the engine is still in good condition. It's not ideal but we believe a few more months won't make any difference. When we go to the shipyard we will clean the whole system with an engine flush and fill it with proper antifreeze which we've already bought. However, the deepest point of our cooling system is the keel cooling which is outside and 2 meters below the waterline. So right now there's absolutely no possibility to drain the whole system. And speaking about our keel cooling, we better open that one before we start the engine. And the valves are all the way down at the bottom of our engine room bilge. The next step is to get some coolant water flowing into it so it can get it all bled as best as possible. It's a relatively complex system for a very, very simple method, but we've got to make sure that the engine will fill first, then it will start to flow through the keel cooling. So we'll have to vent air through this pipe in the engine and eventually we'll vent air through the keel cooling as it comes back through this. So it's going to be a mixture of opening vents until the water runs strong and without bubbles, close it off, top it up until we've got sight glass full of water, and then the magic happens. We start it up. Let's go. Oh no! Oh no! No! The boat is going down. Women and children are meat first. Again, a little bit of information from my side about the cooling system of Flying Coney. Our boat does have a so-called keel cooling. That means that there is a thick pipe running along the keel of the boat. So that means there is no raw water in the boat and there is coolant circulating through the engine through the keel cooling. That means we do not need a heat exchanger, which is a quite expensive part. 
So uh, from a maintenance standpoint, it's a really reliable and good system. But you have also a little bit more drag on the outside. Another problem is that you do need quite a lot of coolant and coolant isn't particularly cheap, which is also the reason why for now we just filled the engine and the keel cooling with tap water, which is fine for a few months, but we have to fill it up completely within the next shipyard time. Another thing you do need when you do have a keel cooling is you do need sea valves going outside of the boat to the keel cooling because whenever there is a problem with the keel cooling basically every connection on the engine every hose becomes safety relevant because the water can flow through the keel cooling into the engine and if there is a problem it can sink the boat when we filled up the engine, some of the hoses were leaking, and that was on purpose. Because the most important thing when working with silicon hoses and hose clamps is not to over tighten the hose clamps, because then they damage the hoses. So when we exchanged the hoses last time, we left the clamps quite loose, and when we filled up the system, we tightened each clamp that was leaking until no more water was dripping out. And the next step is to install the starter batteries again. When we pressure wash the engine room, we stored them higher up to keep them dry. Now we are almost ready to start the engine for the first time after six months. We just need to open the exhaust, check the oil level and bleed the engine one more time before we can start her. For the last bleeding we open up the fuel lines at each cylinder and let the starter turn the engine and the fuel pump. And when fuel sprays out of each line we can close them again and finally start the engine. I guess you are ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Wait a second, I need to pull, but yeah. You are ready My first impressions were that this needed uh, an in-frame rebuild because we had no service history on it. We couldn't really hear it running for very long. So because of the general condition that it appeared to be in, I suggested that we take it apart and do an in-frame rebuild on it. My views on that have now changed somewhat because the engine doesn't appear to be in any distress. It doesn't overheat and it runs beautifully. So, maybe, maybe something more akin to a refresh rather than a rebuild, i.e. 
valve clearances, making sure that any leaks that are there are rectified, but certainly the engine isn't coming out. When I watch the videos on YouTube, it gives no real indication as to what you see when you're standing here. And it's really quite surreal to be standing next to this engine that I've only ever seen on videos for the last 18 months or more. And it's, it's just a, a very real surreal feeling. Um, the boat is way bigger than it looks, way, way bigger. And it's a mammoth project. And I feel really, really privileged to have been part of it. You can't let this thing go to scrap. It cannot be scrapped. It has to be restored. So anybody out there that wishes to take part in this, from somebody who's worked on it, get in touch with these two people, get over here. If you've got the skills necessary to do a lot of the work, help and what have you, from somebody who has been here, who's made that decision, do it. Don't even think about it. Just get over here and do it. You'll enjoy yourself immensely when it stops raining. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. We really enjoyed having you here and working together. And if you would like to help us refitting Flying Coney 2, then just let us know. You'll find our contact details in the video description. Believe me, there's more than enough work on this ship and we are very grateful for each additional hand. No matter how much experience you have, we will find a job for you. That's especially true for the upcoming shipyard's time. As soon as we've set a date, we will let you know. And it would be awesome if we get some help for that very busy time. Overall, this extensive engine maintenance was quite a success. The duff started up without any issues, we tested it thoroughly and now we have a reliable engine again that will bring us safely wherever we want to go. But all this wouldn't be possible without the generous support of our lovely Patreons. And of course there will be an extended version of this video on Patreon as soon as we are done with the editing. A huge thanks to all our supporters, these videos and the refit wouldn't be possible without you. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.